think walking by faith and not by sight has really helped me get through my entire life. And my parents believe that too. I mean, they said, you were born like this for a reason, on purpose, for a purpose, not by mistake. And I know for a fact that being born without legs was absolutely not a mistake. Totally on purpose. 100% for a purpose. And in no way a mistake. My inspiration and motivation behind everything I do is that I know I was made, I was created to do this. I didn't even want to be a speaker. <laughs> Speaking was definitely something that was chosen for me, something I was just made to do. I thought that it would just be my retirement plan. I didn't think I would be speaking right now. I know there are plans for me. The fact that I was born without legs and I never thought it was impossible to be an acrobat or an aerialist or power tumbler or play softball or basketball or volleyball all against able-bodied athletes. My favorite verse, which actually is what the title of my book was derived from, where the inspiration for my book came from, is Mark 9, 23. Everything is possible to the one who believes. I don't do what I do for myself. I do what I do because it's my destiny. It's how I'm being used to touch people, to reach people. It's way bigger than just being about me. Jen Bricker, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How it's are good. you guys? Oh, I mean, are you guys okay? We were you having alive? fun. <laughs> she is super inspiring. And plus, you have your own intro video. I mean, it's... What can I say? I try to be cool. I don't know. Did you yeah. guys like it? <laughs> when you, you've arrived when you have your own intro video, you know? <laughs> okay, I've arrived. <laughs> so, okay, welcome back, first of all, because you used to go to Real Life years ago. Yes, Tell thank you. That. So I, I used to go to Real Life back in the day, like you said, and I left here in 2010, and that was the last time I was back here. So this is a total homecoming for me. This is really special. I'm so pumped to be here. Yeah. It's... Definitely a cool welcome back, and I remember uh, meeting you, I remember hearing your story, which inspired us because uh, our daughter Jayla was being born with challenges, and that's when somebody said, but do you know this, this lady that goes to our church? She's got this awesome, inspiring story, and then somebody shared that, and it's just, it's one of those things that um, God used to remind us that everything is possible, mm. which happens to be the name of Jen Bricker's book, Everything is Possible. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> it, it was, but it was from me, not you, so it's that works. true. He can do it, I can't do it. <laughs> All right, so you've been featured in a lot of places, a lot of accomplishments. Uh, tell us some highlights. I want everybody to kind of get a feel for how God has used you. One of the coolest things, I, uh, I toured with Britney Spears back in the day in, in 2009 as a featured act doing a trampoline act with my old partner. So it was a, a duo trampoline. When I say trampoline, I don't mean your backyard trampoline. I'm talking a 12 by 14 trampoline and I was catching some serious air at one point, probably 20 feet off of the bed and it sets five feet off the floor. So there you, are. There you go, there it is. And that was just kind of one cool shot, but um, that was you know incredible. We toured North America and Australia, sometimes 20,000 people in house and you just, I have never felt more alive and also having my heart outside my chest, just, oh my gosh, this is my life, this is crazy. And it was just epic and since wow. then. By the way, whenever somebody says, uh, what are some of your highlights? And the first thing you say is, uh, well, I remember when I toured with Britney Spears. <laughs> that's pretty good, right? Like, that's pretty big time. <laughs> 
it was totally a God thing, as pretty much everything in my life is. And since then, I've uh, been to 17 countries all over the world, uh, performing as an acrobat, an aerialist, and a speaker. And then my book came out um, about, well, a little over, almost a year and a half ago, and we're already in nine languages. And the book became a New York Times bestseller, and that, that was just all God, seeing it go around the world, and he gave me that in my heart before the book was a book. I knew that it needed to be in as many languages as possible, and to see that come to fruition is just, it's just incredible. That, I, I love how God's using you and has used you. I mean, really, he's just getting started because you're like 29 years old. <laughs> I'm 30, but thanks. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now, how about a woman who just flat out tells you her age? Come on, let's just, I love that. <laughs> And I was going with the 29 Nothing thing. Nothing to hide. <laughs> All right, so how much of your success would you attribute to uh, your time here at Real Life? Well, I would say all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of it. Definitely, he, I give him all, all the credit. <laughs> this, this church building, which wasn't even here when I was here. That's so, true. yes, all of it, the whole thing. So that's it, just the whole thing. Just the whole thing. Okay, well, I, I there you have it. I got a little bit of an ego boost, right? <laughs> if, if you all want to be successful in life, this is the church for you. That's why you're here. So for those of you that couldn't get out of bed today, but you're watching online, it doesn't work. You have to, yeah. But now I mean, know his real motivation and why I'm here. It's to help him. Mm -hmm. Baby steps, baby <laughs> steps. Okay, so, I mean, that's incredible when I think about, like, yeah, that's young. I used to not think 30 was young, <laughs> but I do now. Like at your age, God's already like opened up so many doors and he's using you in so many ways. So let's go back a little bit, all right? So I like to tell stories. I like to get a glimpse of where you're at, then go back being born. Now you were there, but you don't remember it, but <laughs> I remember there's all pictures, it. right? The Somebody's gone stories, over it with you. pictures, yes. So, um, you know, I was born without legs and I was left in a hospital and put up for adoption. My biological family was from Romania and then came to the States and I was born and I lived in a foster home for the first three months of my life with a really beautiful foster couple that eventually kind of stayed into my life. And my parents were in Southern Illinois in a cornfield and my mom had three boys, but she always wanted to have a baby girl. And she always felt like she was supposed to have four kids. And she had to have a hysterectomy though after my last brother. So she couldn't have kids anymore. But she never gave up hope. She never gave up praying and believing. And she said, I just, I want a baby girl and I'm supposed to have four kids. So 10 years later, not giving up faith, not giving up hope, persevering, she heard about a baby girl one day, born without legs and needed a home. And I think it was just kind of like, hmm, baby girl needs a home, up for adoption. I'll have her. It was, it was like I was up for adoption. Ooh, I'll take her. <laughs> and, you know, she kind of basically said something to my dad, and he gets three words out. Well, if I thought, oh, good. I'm glad we are on the same page, she said. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds just like my mom when it comes to dogs. <laughs> she always finds a way to get an extra one. Oh, that's me. Oh, yeah. I love dogs. My goodness. I'm going to be a crazy dog lady one day. I'm trying to get her to just love one or maybe two, but anyway, so yeah, I can just see my mom, like, and then my dad will try to speak into that, and, um, you know, good try, dad. Good that's try. How, that's pretty much it. This yeah. is it. That's how it went, and they, they, you know, every obstacle was against them. My, my dad was 42, my mom was 40, and this was before 40 was the new 30, okay? Which it is now, it starting is now. right now. Yes, yes, Justin, yes. <laughs> And so, you know, they had never adopted, never fostered. They knew nothing about disability or people without legs, definitely. And, but, you know, they didn't care. I mean, they just, my mom wanted a baby girl. That was it, period. My brothers, really cool story. They were 10, 12, and 14 years old. They sat my brothers down individually and started asking them, what would it really look like to you practically if you had a girl, a sister, a girl, yeah, a sister, um, without legs? You know, what would that look like? What if... You know, your friends came over and they maybe had an issue with it or the oldest one you're going to be dating in a while. Same scenario. What if she comes home and maybe they think it's weird. And each one of them individually at 10, 12, and 14 years old said the same thing. They said, well, if they have a problem with her, then I don't want them in my life anyway. Mm. Yep. Cool kids. Cool kids. Yeah, so, and that's part of your story is how God prepared you for what you're doing now with a lot of positivity and people that spoke life into you. So talk to me about growing up, because I don't think what your brothers were ready for was the fact that you would beat them at a lot of things. 
It was like they were ready to defend you and protect you, and, but it turns out they needed to be protected from you because yeah. <laughs> you were tough. Yeah, you know, when you raise someone to be tough, it, it's crazy when they actually turn out to be tough. Who knew? So, um, yeah, no, it was, it was my family. It was my brothers, obviously my mom and dad. But then also beyond that was my, my school and my community, my teachers, my coaches, and my peers. And I grew up, like I said, in the middle of nowhere in a, in a cornfield. So it was a small school, and people just, I identified myself as did everybody else, as, oh, Jen's strong, Jen's an athlete, Jen talks too much in class, <laughs> Jen's nosy, she's always involved in something's going on, you know? And so that was literally how I saw myself. There was no identity or attachment to, oh, I'm in a wheelchair or I'm disabled, like zero, absolutely a total detachment, which I didn't think was weird as a kid. I only realized that that was something amazing to even talk about, when I became an adult and actually became a speaker. Because then people, they're like, wait, what? You didn't have a horrible childhood? You weren't bullied? Is it really? Are you just lying to me? No, I'm not lying to you. Like, can I, can I just not have a good childhood? <laughs> like, could I not have a good family? I mean, is that crazy? <laughs> sure, I had struggles, but those struggles weren't my struggles. I had different struggles, Yeah. you know? And the irony is, one of my biggest insecurities as a kid and even as a young adult was, you know, I've always had, I've always had so much muscle in my body. And I know every guy in here is like, and that's a problem because why? You know, my greatest weakness is probably my strength. <laughs> yeah. When you're a female and you see all these girls on TV and they have ballerina arms and they're thin and they're beautiful and that's the definition of feminine and you are the exact opposite of that, it's a big deal when you're a, I got a female. You. Okay. You know? and, and, so, and you're compensating for lower body with upper body, so of course yes. you're going to have a, a very strong upper body. Yes, but I, I've realized that it's actually genetic. There's plenty of people who I've seen that don't have legs that don't have arms like me. And okay. I, but I look back at my life and I've always had them and I'm an acrobat and I'm an aerialist. So here I am and I just, it, it like consumed me. It was such a massive insecurity. I would, you know, pose differently in pictures. I would never let you see me from the side. I was just like so, so, so insecure about this. And as I got older, I'm like, now go figure. I can just completely write off the fact that I don't have legs and miss no big deal. But yet this, me having huge arms and feeling masculine and not feminine absolutely hung me up in my life. It absolutely stopped me. But that, that goes back to the point of how it's all in our mind. Right. How powerful what we tell ourselves, whether it's a lie or it's a truth to ourselves, And it can devastate us. It can paralyze us. And I've, I've been there, not just with my arms, but with other things too. And that, but it, it's just here. That's all it is. I, no, we, and we have to make that choice to <clears throat> listen to God. Like you might notice that the people here have slightly higher confidence than people that you speak to across the world because they <laughs> believe this. God's crazy <clears throat> about you, right? And that changes some things. And, and that comes from, for me, years of living with insecurities. I think we all do. Fears, insecurities, uh, doubts. Uh, I remember being, it's crazy to me to think, okay, so you're growing up with no legs and you're not insecure about it. Like you're just, because like for me, middle school, any middle schoolers in here? I love you guys. I pray for you. Like when I was in middle school, everything was an insecurity. I remember being on the eighth grade basketball team and I could only make right-handed layups because my right arm had the sufficient amount of hair under it and my left arm didn't blossom yet. And so I'm like, I'd go up for a left-handed layup, but it'd be like, you know, like, no big deal. they're like, that is the weirdest layup. Cause I didn't want to like, oh, he's bald under there. Like what's the worst? Burn him. But I was just thinking about that. That would go through my head and I've never shared that publicly. This is weird. Can, we do I need you. a counselor? Maybe, probably. <laughs> so that I, I think about how your family must have spoken life into you, but there yes. were truths that you were believing. Like yes. your identity was so rooted in how God sees you and that, t tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, growing up, my parents told me I was born this way. God doesn't make mistakes, right? We've all heard this. God doesn't make mistakes. This wasn't some accident. This wasn't a coincidence. You're a miracle. You're an answered prayer, which actually I, I really was an answered prayer for them, right. right? And so, but they implanted that in me, in my mind as a kid. 
And then it became, then it was beyond that as I got older because it wasn't just words anymore. And it wasn't just words from them either. They also backed their words up with their actions. And that was what I realized now as an adult to be one of the most powerful things because when I saw them make me independent, they taught me how to be independent by saying, hey, you're just going to figure this out on your own. In, in not, not too far right, not too far left, just she's going to act like everybody else. We're going to treat her like we did our other kids, and that was it. So when they said, you're a miracle, you can do anything you want. Jen, you had a good head on your shoulders. Of course you can. Like there, there was just that confidence that they had in me that gave me more confidence. And I knew that it was rooted in God making me this way for a reason. It's not like he just, you know, I'm on the conveyor belt when people are up there getting made in heaven. And he's like, oh, my bad. I forgot to put legs on that one. Just kidding. Oh, well. You know, it was. <laughs> he looked away for a second. He like, was, oh, ow. He got distracted, you go. know. It's not, that's not how it went down. Because the, the reality is, with, if I were as born any different, then I wouldn't be able to have the platform that I have today. None of this would be here. This, this everything is possible. The pictures, all that, that just would not be a reality. The nine languages, traveling all over the world, 17, none of that would, would be possible if he didn't make me exactly the mm. way I was supposed to be. Amen. And see, yes. I think that's true for all of us yes. that we've got to embrace that there are parts of us that are different, that they're unique. There's parts of us that are, are challenging, things that we would change if we could maybe, and that that's part of our uniqueness. That's yes. part of how God fearfully and wonderfully designed us for the mission that he has for us. Absolutely. And you seem like there are some people that are gifted with strange amounts of confidence. You seem to be one of them. Not being one of those people, people think I am because I'm on stage, it's like, man, it takes a lot of prayer to get this guy to want to be in public. So. <laughs> Uh, like, I embrace the call that God has for me, and, and he's prepared me for it in a lot of ways. But, like, I think about, so my daughter, Jayla, you know, she's, she's spina bifida in a wheelchair, and uh, people are drawn to her. They see Christ in her because God has blessed her with this personality that's so magnetic. And uh, we, we were at the park the other day at Disney, and somebody gave her something. Hey, would you like this pin? And she's like, sure, thank you. And I said, why do you think people do that to you? And she's like, I don't know, I guess because I'm cute. <laughs> so just in her mind, she does think she's different. She knows that she's different. She's just pretty much cuter than everybody else. Why not? There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> I, and I love that because that, um, that, that just projects some of the things that God tells us that we know are true, we just don't believe them sometimes, that, that we are the prize of his creation, we are his workmanship, that we were created in advance to do good things yes. and and you embrace that and from, from deep down. Well, it's, you know, it's the, it's the culmination of everything that we spoke about from being adopted, from hearing what my parents had to say, from seeing it then play out in action. And then as I've gotten older and my relationship with God has gotten closer, you know, that's, people say like, oh, I've, I've changed or I've grown or I've matured. Only time I change, grow or mature is when my relationship with God changes, grows or matures. <laughs> that's, I'm, I'm a mm. product of, how close I am with him, how much time I'm spending in the word, how much time I'm spending in prayer. Right. Okay, so because that has increased, I have learned more about myself because I've learned more about my creator. Okay, just makes sense. You learn more about someone who designs a product, you learn more about the product. Am product. <laughs> Learning more about him, right? So um, I've realized that God will never send us somewhere without being equipped. Wherever he's sending you, if you're saying yes, we don't have to worry because he's already equipped us. So he made me this way with this personality because I had to be this way because of where he's calling me to be. Right. It, it blows my mind how I've learned as I've gotten older how purposeful and specific God is. Mm. It's unbelievable. It's changed my prayer life. I pray about what I'm going to wear every day. I pray about... This, I pray about going through TSA at the airport because most of my life is on a plane. I pray about, you know, the gate agent that I'm going to be with, the person that I'm sitting next to. Like, and you realize the more specific you get in your prayer, the, I think the bigger God come, becomes to you. And you realize how big our God is and that he is the God of miracles. Mm. Like, that is so real. And when you start getting it to that level, it starts to become real in your life. It's amazing. I love it. That, that's inspiring stuff. Uh, 
you know, for a guy that wears hoodies and jeans, maybe, maybe it is time to start praying about what I wear. <laughs> anyway, I feel That's, like... That was my nice way of saying it to him. Like, maybe you step up your step game. Step up your Justin. game, Pastor. <laughs> it's just my thing. I feel like God has kind of said, just do that, because we've got so many other bigger things to work on. <laughs> just be comfortable. It's the least of your worries. <laughs> so, attention. Has there been a point, or like, what's, what's been the hardest thing in your life? Probably... The first thing that comes to my mind is dealing with body image issues. Now you're going to maybe automatically think, oh, right, of course, because you don't have legs. Not, no, <laughs> different direction. <laughs> being a, just a total female girl living in L.A., being in the entertainment industry, as strong as I am mentally, it, it doesn't, it's powerful. But let me tell you, never, never think that you are beyond falling into temptation to anything. Mm. <laughs> and I realized that because I fell hook, line, and sinker into becoming obsessed with being this big. And I became this big because, you know, that drive and determination you talked about, it, it's great, but it can also work against you. And I just went all in and I became so thin, you know, my ribs were showing, my hair was thinning. I wouldn't go to parties, like if there was going to be food just avoided it, wouldn't meet people at restaurants because I didn't want to be tempted by food. I would just have coffee or tea. I just completely isolated myself. And then, so that's one thing, but then coming out of that was the struggle. Coming out of that, I got down to below a double zero, definitely in kids' clothes. I can already wear kids' clothes anyway, so imagine when I'm like super, super rail thin. I, I couldn't look in the mirrors. I had to cover up. I have a mirror that's a floor-to-ceiling mirror in my room. I had to completely cover it up because oh, wow. I was ripping myself apart every single morning. If I had, if my stomach wasn't basically sunken in and more than flat, then I was ripping myself apart. I didn't want, want to look at any pictures that were taken of me. I mean, it was just low, low, low. I, I felt fat even though I was real thin. It was a total body dysmorphia is, is now really what I yeah. realized. I just a lot of people struggle with that. A lot That's of people struggle. It's a huge deal, and I can't believe I fell into that. And then yeah. I had to spend three years basically afterwards. <laughs> this wasn't like an overnight thing or next month or next week or next year. It, and it was choosing every single day when I felt so disgusting. I, di I felt fat. I didn't care. It didn't make a difference if the whole world told me I was beautiful. Didn't, it didn't matter. It was right. in my own mind. And so I had to come out of that and choose to feel beautiful and choose to remember God's words. I would just speak out scripture out loud multiple mm -hmm. times a day. That's what I had to do a lot of times to just, you know, and it was a choice absolutely every day, all the time, over and over, over and over, over and over. And it was so hard because nobody could get me out of it except me and God. That was it. And I learned, obviously, my relationship grew with him. You know, I grew and I can now speak to other women about that because I've actually been right. in the trenches. I've been there. I've been to the lowest places, and I, I understand what that means. But also, God showed me how to take actions toward that. Right. Covering up the mirror, choosing every day, you know, avoiding, just avoiding mirrors, because you know what? I know it's a weakness. It's like an alcoholic avoiding a bar. That's how it is when you're mm. in these things, you know? And it was, thankfully, a, a, a part of my past, but it's something that I, I just can't let linger. You know, I can't, for example, with the arms, right? I would always wear longer sleeves or three-quarter length because if I'm on TV, that side angle that everybody loves would make my arms look huge and it was my insecurity. So I told myself once I came through that whole experience that if I wanted to wear a dress that had no sleeves, I'm going to do it no matter what because that was my way of challenging myself to be confident no matter what. I love this. Thank you so much for just opening that up even because I think for so many of us uh, when we go through seasons like that we think we're alone we think yes. we're the only ones we isolate ourselves yep. from other people rather than just saying hey this is what I struggle with and it's, it's so common those insecurities those fears those uh, doubts that we have and then what you said though because we make choices in that right like we're all making choices we're either believing lies we're believing the truth yes. and you just had to speak scripture out loud like you you, you began to take steps that would not instantly but over time, pull you out of that. And I think that's true for all of us. It's like, okay, so what am I doing about that? This is how I'm feeling. And sometimes our feelings are based on reality. Sometimes they're not. Yes. We feel things that aren't based on truth at all. 100%. I mean, 
it, it sounds even like, you know, foolish talking about the arms thing, right? Because the irony is that that was my own thing that I created. And yet here are all these people coming to me, men and women. Oh my gosh, your arms are beautiful. Your arms are amazing. And because of my choices, I choose to believe that that wasn't true. I chose to be even irritated by that. Like, really? You think that's flattering coming from a guy to say that to a girl? And I'm like, Jen, what is your problem? Take a compliment, you know? But that's my point is, is that mm. those were my choices and it wasn't even a thing because most people were looking at my arms the complete opposite way I was. And right. that just really showed me, wow, I chose for so long to wrap myself up in a total lie, a total, total lie that took my, it stole my joy. Mm -hmm. And I will never let anything steal my joy for that long again, ever. That's right. Yeah. And, and so I love this conversation because I, I really do think this, this helps people a lot to think about, I've got to choose joy, you know, and I've got to choose the truth and I've got to continue to tell myself what God's already told me. And then I've got to choose to believe it. I've got to choose to act on those things. And uh, also, though, how God will take our mess and make it a message. And like yes. you said, you, you went through that so that you can help other people. And, and I wonder if there are people, like in the church, I'm sure, this weekend, that you're going through something right now that God's allowing. He, he's maybe not forcing it on you or causing it. He's allowing it in your life because he's going to use it to bless other people and to change lives. Absolutely. 100%. I mean... God is, like I said, he's so purposeful and he's just, it's amazing how specific, like I said earlier, he is, but everything we go through and every, every desire in our heart, everything we love or that we're drawn to is for a reason. It's amazing. It, I, I've just seen it. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it across the world and it's so real. And when we can just stop fighting it, it just becomes so much better. You know, we just, we choose to agree and be in alignment with God instead of choosing to rest in our feelings. Because I have a lot of feelings. I've always yeah. had a lot of emotions my entire life. And that was a huge, huge battle. I'm glad that you mentioned that because we all have feelings and emotions. And actually our society tells us to follow them. That's right. the confusing part. Right, follow your feelings. Follow your yeah. feelings, man. Follow your it's all, follow your heart. It's do you. That's it. And it's like, try that out and then tell me how it works for you. Mm. <laughs> because... It didn't work very well for me. And I, and I fell into that lie as well, into and then that total so lie of society. It doesn't work out for you. You don't believe me, you can just try it and you're, you'll see it. I'm just trying to save you some time here because I, I put a lot of years into just putting way too much stock into emotion and feeling yeah. and not enough stock into God's word. And now I'm starting to live the opposite of that, yeah. thankfully. That, okay, so let's talk about this. Another little personal God touch in your life is meeting your sister. That's part of your story that just kind of amazes me. So uh, tell us about, because you grew up uh, gymnastics, right? Yep. Aerialist, acrobat, Softball, and basketball. you've got a yep. hero. You've got an Olympian hero in your life. Yes, so I love gymnastics, watched it from a young age, saw Dominique Mochianu on TV, and then she later became in the 96 Olympics. I knew she was Romanian. I knew I was Romanian. We looked alike, and growing up in the middle of nowhere, no one looked like me. So it was amazing, and there was definitely no Romanians. So um, it was just, whoa, she, she's a gymnast too, and I love it, and I loved it even more because she was a gymnast, and she's Romanian, and what, we look alike? And as a seven, eight-year-old, that's pretty awesome, you know? And so loved her, was all about her, right before I turned 16, so fast forward a couple, <laughs> couple years, um, I was with my best friend at the time, and she was also adopted. She had just found out what her biological last name would have been. Now, never up until this point did I have any interest in seeking out my biological family. God just plants this thought into my mind right then and there. I wonder what my biological last name would have been. Hmm, I wonder if my parents know anything about my biological family. Now, right then and there, that's a miracle. That's from God. Because why would I assume or even consider the fact that my parents would know something about my biological family and not tell and me. And hadn't mentioned it yet. Had, yeah. th they were so open. They were beyond open with everything about my adoption. So I go home, ask my mom. And then, I mean, I'm not expecting an answer, let alone yes. She says yes. And I'm just like, time out. Like, what? How? How do you know something about my biological family? That just doesn't even... Then she tells me, well, you know, we should probably wait till your dad gets home. And I'm just like, 
have you met me? Like, we, I, no, I am, We're no. We're not waiting. We yeah. are, no, not waiting. <laughs> it's not happening. And <laughs> so she goes and gets this, this huge middle envelope and full of papers, puts it on the table, and she's like, well, you're never going to believe this, but your biological last name would have been Mochianu, meaning Dominique Mochianu was my full-blooded biological sister. Right. Mind blown, exactly, like he so perfectly illustrated. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, mind blown, excited, shocked, disbelieved, excited, shocked, disbelief, on repeat, and then, you know, just wanted to meet her. Then I go online, I start online creeping and stalking her website, you know. Don't judge me, we've all been there. <laughs> and so, and then I discover I have another sister, younger sister. And this sister, it was like, well, if I ever wondered what I would look like with legs, that was it. Because she had my face and she had legs and boom, that was it. I'm like, wow, this, is, this was literally my face on another person's are. body. Yeah. My big fat Romanian wedding. This, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you girls, because I thought Greek, but I see the Romanian. Wow, wow, you guys look so obviously like sisters. We, it's some strong genes right there, let me tell you. And I'm not talking about Levi's. I, had to, I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't resist, I'm sorry. That's a pastor joke. I know, I went there. Yeah. He's rubbing off on me. Yeah, so, sorry. We'll gosh, dang it. <laughs> but yeah, so my older sister's Dominique, and Christina's my younger sister. And um, we just, basically, when I found that out, obviously wanted to meet them, had a pretty strong feeling. They had no idea I existed. We were right. Spent four years, a four-year journey trying to contact them. My third and final attempt was the successful one. Actually, I was living here in Orlando. And uh, December 2007 was when I made contact with them. And May of 2008 was the first time we all met. So it'll be our 10-year anniversary this May. So cool. Yeah. That, what a great story. Yeah. And for me, I... I'm an only child, or at least they told me, but a lot of times when I see the guy from Thor, I feel like, <laughs> you know, you saw her and you were like, I think that's what I would look like with legs. <laughs> I see him and I'm like, I think that's what I would look like with muscles. Definitely. I really do. And so it's possible we're brothers. Where's I, your hammer? You got out a hammer. I've, I've got a you hammer. You got a hammer. You just it's don't... styrofoam so I can uh, wield it. Of, of course, you can definitely. But, yes. <laughs> anyway, this is, this, we, too much. It's like too us. much. Okay, yeah. we're having fun. I hope you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> we're, have, we're all having fun. Uh, tell us a little bit about just your faith and, and like how God has used that part of you because that's to me what shines through, mm -hmm. right? Like I see what God's put in you and it's magnetic, but how he's used you to change lives. Well, it's, it's amazing. One thing that just pops into my head is, you know, being in foreign countries. I've, like I said, I've been to 17 countries so far and I spent a lot of time in the Middle East performing, specifically in Dubai and Qatar. And, um, I, you know, the first time I went to Dubai, I was just, oh, yeah, that was four-wheeling or out in, the, out in the desert outside Dubai. That was really fun. And um, so I'm in there the first time. That was actually my first trip. And I don't really know what to expect, right? As Americans, we only know of the Middle East what we hear. It's the stereotypes on, on TV and whatnot. Right. And so not just only as a woman, but... As a person who doesn't have legs, how am I going to be treated? Because don't they outcast people like that? You know, I had heard that. So I go over there, and sure enough, that part's true. I, you don't see anybody who has any kind of difference or, or disability, right? Because they just don't come out in public. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm like bracing myself here with one eye open, right? And I go there, and God just, you know, the joy of the Lord is your strength, that mm. verse. That verse became my real life, like boom, it was like, Bam, right there, it played out in real life. So I'm in the mall, and I'm in different areas. So malls are everything over there. It gets super hot, and you ain't seen a mall until you've been to Dubai. You, they have maps, they have directions, they have, I mean, it is four stories. You get lost in that thing. It is insane. So you, I'm in the mall, and I started noticing an overwhelming trend of people saying two things. They would come up to me, and they would be crying, and they'd say, oh, my gosh, you're, you're so pretty, but you're so happy. And I thought, okay, the, the pretty part's flattering, but, but why are they saying these two specific things and they're crying? Like, I didn't do anything. I'm in the mall with my friends. And I realized it was the joy of the Lord coming through me. And that so much so that most of these people, in fact, probably none of them were Christians. Yet, because it's a Holy Spirit, supernatural God thing, they were moved to tears and came up to me, and it was just the joy of the Lord shining through. And that was my strength to connect with these people. 
all around the world. Didn't, wasn't in the same culture, wasn't in the same religion. A lot of times didn't speak the same language. This has happened in multiple other countries as well who don't even speak English. And it's a God thing. And so I so thought, cool. whoa, and that's the screensaver on my phone. The joy of the Lord is my strength because that has just played out yep. so and, real. And we have to choose it. We have to choose joy. And as we continue to choose joy, be joyful always because each one of us has a reason to think about what's wrong in our life yes. or what we don't have. But when we're thankful for what we do and people see that and they're drawn to you and that in that culture, they're assuming, and I think a lot of people assume, oh, wow, that must be really hard. And I, I wonder what, and then look at her, she's radiating because they expect that, wow, if I had that difficulty, I would choose depression. I would choose limitation. And you're a person that believes that everything is possible. Yes. And they see that in you and that comes from God. It, it totally comes from God and it is a gift. You know, it is a gift that he gives all of us. I mean, right. we all have that and it is a choice. It's not just a choice once a day either. Sometimes it's a hundred times a day. But those choices, it's also going back to just, it's not all about you. <laughs> it's not all about me. It's not, we're not living our lives right. for us. So the choices that we're making and when we choose joy, it's, it's great because we feel good, but it's really not about us. Because me being over there in those countries and having those experiences, it wasn't about me. It was about so I could tell you this story today. It was about so they could see something that they never thought possible. Amen. That's what it's about. That's why I do what I do. It's not some solo gen mission where, oh, this is so cool. Look, I get to be on a cover of a book or oh, I get to be on a stage. No, that, that has all made my life much harder. Trust me. That's a lot more work. <laughs> There's a, yeah, it could be easier if I just stayed at home in southern Illinois in a cornfield and hid away from life. That's easy. But what I'm doing, it's, God showed me that. You know, it's like the video. It's way bigger than myself. It's bigger than me. It's not just about me. That's not the point. The point is actually not even about me at all. It's just that God gave me a life that's meant to be shared. Amen. Period. And I think that's true for all of us. Uh, just really quickly... Because it just dropped two days ago, our friend who happens to be a believer, Jacoby from Papa Roach. Yes. Papa Roach, brand new video. Guess who's in it? This girl. Let's check it out. We have a clip. We can't shoot, clip. Yeah, we can't show too much because I think Facebook will shut us down or something. Because yeah. they don't know that, like, she's in the video. Let it play, okay? And they're like, <laughs> oh, copyright. So, but very cool. Like, just another one of the ways that God is using you and that you're out there and people are going to see you and they're going to see him. And I love it. Any closing challenges or things that you want to share with us? Absolutely. I just, you know, I just want everyone to, to know and believe that, you know, we were all born with gifts and talents and abilities that God gave us. Unique is our DNA, unique is our fingerprint. And with those talents and abilities come the power to change a life. There's mm. power, that godly, pure, real power. And every single person has it. You all have a platform, you all have a stage. It's the people in your life, that's your platform, not your, that's your stage. But you gotta believe that with those abilities and gifts and talents, that you can change a life, that it is possible. So I just wanna know, I wanna hear some enthusiasm. Do you believe you can change a life? Amen. Make them do it one more time. Yeah, it was a little weak. So you're gonna have to give me a little more than that. So do you believe you can change a life? Come on. I'm like, I'm front row and you're my pastor. Yeah. And I'm like, come on pastor. Yes, I'm, I'm encouraged, I'm inspired. And a lot of the things that you've been sharing have just been speaking to me about, you know, because any season that we're in, God's calling us to something or, or he has opportunities or challenges in front of us that we're a little bit scared of. And the fear, the insecurity, and the doubt. And uh, I just think about, man, we can live in that or we can just embrace the call that God's put on our life. And what's the worst that can happen? We got to jump out there and say, God, use me because it's not about me anyway. So if I fail, hey, that was part of the plan, but I'm going to try because God's calling me. But I love your life. I love that everything is possible. This is a really cool, inspiring book. When you gave it to me last night, I was like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, Thank I'm you. pulled in. And you're going you're gonna to be out there yeah, and, and sharing with people. There, okay, so. super cool. Um, let's close in prayer and then yep. get to hang out with Jen a little bit. Lord, thank you so much that you're here with us today. And I thank you for my friend Jen and what an inspiration she is because she has believed what you said to her and about her. 
and she's chosen to embrace that. There have been weak moments, and there have been moments of fear, insecurity, and doubt, and Lord, I just love how you have prepared her to uh, change lives as she focuses not on herself, but on you and on, on the mission that's at hand. As you've lifted her up, literally, she's an aerialist. She is in the air for all to see. Lord, as you've lifted her up, she is lifting you up. And people see you in her. I pray that you will continue to bless her with that gift and that magnetism and that joy, God. Help her to make those tough choices. But also, God, that you would commission all of us to live like that as she has just shared with us. And so we just love you, and we can't wait to get out there and live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank Jim you. Bricker, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Thank you so much.